Hi friends. Today we are going to read a story about an American woman who changed the science world, the physics world. And her name was Shan Shuang Wu. Here is a picture of Shan Shuang Wu. You can see her there. Um, she, we like to call the queen of physics or the first lady of physics. Um, so today, since we're talking about physics, our letter is P. Say it with me three times. P. 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 Good job saying the letter P with me. And of course, P is for physics. So today's story, as I mentioned, is about Chan Shuang Wu. So the story is called Queen of Physics. How Wu Chan Shuang helped unlock the secrets of the atom. Here's the cover. You can see her sitting in her laboratory, um, contemplating, perhaps thinking about the atom. Um, so Queen of Physics, how Wu Chan Shuang helped unlock the secrets of the atom, written by Teresa Robeson. So in China, in the small town of Laiwe, the Wu family celebrated the birth of a child. The child was a girl. A girl, what would become of her? I wonder why they're asking themselves what would become of her since she's a girl. Because in those days, girls were not sent to school, not considered as smart as boys, and certainly not encouraged to be scientists. But Mama and Baba Wu did not feel that way. They believed girls should, be, should go to school and could become anything they wanted to be. So you can see her playing there. They knew their daughter would be smart and brave. That she would make a difference in the world. Baba named her Shan Shuang, which means courageous hero. Again, you can see her there playing. Her name meaning courageous hero, Shan Shuang. Even before Wu Shan Shuang arrived in the world, Baba had quit his job as an engineer and opened a school just for girls. Mama wore out her shoes trudging to every house in Laoi to urge families to educate their daughters. So when Shan Shuang was ready, a school was waiting for her. Baba was the principal and Mama the teacher, teaching little girls to read and write and count. Baba and Mama were courageous too, as they showed their daughter the way. So you can see there, you can see their school and they're teaching all the girls in their town. Soon enough, Chan Shuang had learned everything she could from her parents' school. She knew how to count and to add, subtract, multiply, divide. She knew how to read and write hundreds of Chinese words with their strong dots, angled lines, and wispy tells. Chan Shuang was ready or more. Isn't it nice when you learn new things, master those things, and you're ready to learn more. But in the 1920s, the next closest girls to school was in the city of Shaizhou, 50 long miles of bumpy, dusty, 
country roads away. She would have to live there, far from her family, and could only go home for winter and summer vacations. Mama wept, Baba worried, but they knew their daughter had to brave the world to grow. Chan Chuang knew it too. So off she went. That probably made all, everyone a little sad, huh? You see her there going off, going through the mountains, leaving her family behind. The school offered two programs, teacher training and academic. Chan Shuang picked the free teaching teacher training program, but she peeked into the academic program textbooks and saw that they covered so much more. Science wasn't just science. It was biology and chemistry and physics, all constructed by the lovely language of mathematics. So you can see her start discovering her love of science at school. And oh, physics, physics, the study of the very matter and energy around her, the study of things that could be seen or felt. Heat, sound, light, electricity, and motion. And of things too minuscule to be seen or felt atoms and even tinier parts of atoms, physic captured her heart. So you can see her there studying and learning physics. During the day, Chan Shuang attended her own classes. At night, she studied the academic textbooks. She borrowed from friends. She called it self learning. It was a habit she would keep for the rest of her life. Her classmates noticed that Chan Shuang worked extra hard and was not afraid of challenges. They asked her to be their leader in their underground group to fight against the government. Citizens were not allowed to say what they wanted. If they supported the wrong political party or said the wrong thing, or happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, they would be punished, perhaps even killed by the government, by the warlords, by rich and powerful foreigners who live there. The students wanted someone brave to lead them. They asked Chan Shuang, who, what would she do? What could she do? So it was a very repressive government. Baba had named her Courageous Hero. She would live up to her name. With her days full of classes, homework, secret studying on her own, and leading student protests and strikes, Shan Shuang had little time to miss her family. The years flew by. So you can see her there doing everything she can. Now 17 years old, she graduated with top grades. It would have been easy to go home, but she took the harder path and traveled to Nanjing three times farther away from home than she had ever gone before to attend the National Central University where she immersed herself in her favorite subject, physics. You can see that picture there. Once again, her hard work and determination made her a leader among the students. Wu Chan Shuang led the march 
to General Jean K. Sheck's headquarters, where she and her classmates urged his government to resist Japanese invaders just before the start of World War II. You can see her there organizing. Like a seed that must fly far to flourish, Chan Chuang set forth once more in 1936, this time to Berkeley, California, thousands of miles across the ocean. She was going to continue studying the physics of atoms. Scientists understood atoms, but not completely. If people knew how atoms split, they could use them in new inventions and technologies, maybe even help doctors treat sick people. She focused on beta decay, where where a nucleon inside an atom broke into an opposite nucleon, an electron or positron and a neutrine. It was like opening one present and getting three different gifts inside. So you can see her studying atoms there. After California, Chan Chuang went to Columbia University in New York, where she continued to study beta decay. She was careful. She was precise. She conducted experiment after experiment until she had a deeper understanding of beta decay than just about anyone else. The reputation grew and physicists who couldn't solve their own problem came to her for help. Scientist Enrico Fermi said that electrons should have had faster speeds when they burst out of the neutron during beta decay. He couldn't prove it. Nobody could. So you can see all the scientists there working really hard to figure it out. But Xin Xin Shuang could because she understood beta decay so well. She knew what to look for because she was such a careful researcher. She was able to run a difficult experiment that proved Fermi right. Many people thought that Chan Shuang should have won the Nobel Prize for this work, but she did not receive it. You can see her there showing everyone else what she had learned, what she had found. When two physicists, Yang Chen Ning and Li Song Dao, questioned something many scientists believed that nature did not distinguish between right and left, a concept of symmetry called parity. They asked Chan Shuang to investigate. Because she had worked on parity and beta decay, she knew just what to do to focus on the project. She even canceled a trip to China a rare chance to see her parents for the first time since she had left home for the United States. Her hard work paid off. Her results proved to be right. For this, Yang and Li, but not Xi and Shuang, won a Nobel Prize. So the scientist who asked her for help won a Nobel Prize but she did not. Hmm. Another two physicists, Richard Feynman and Murray Gilman, asked her to check their hypothesis about a special expression of beta decay. In her usual thorough way, Chan Shuang ran experiments and confirmed their data or idea. 
Many scientists praised her for this important finding, yet for the third time, she did not get a Nobel Peace Prize. Sometimes Chan Shuang did not get the jobs she wanted either because she was a woman, because she was Asian. Was she sad? Yeah. Was she disappointed? Often. Was she discouraged? Occasionally. But she did not let these feelings stop her from doing what she loved. Because Baba always said, ignore the obstacles. Just put your head down and keep walking forward forward. So there you see her looking forward, not letting obstacles get in her way. There was only one obstacle she could not overcome. Because of World War II, the political unrest in China afterward, and her focus on her work, Chan Shuang was not able to return to see her parents before they died. My heart was breaking she wrote to a friend when she could not attend Baba's funeral. Still, in her new home in the United States, Chan Shuang continued on her courageous path. She fought prejudice against women and Asians and became such an exceptional physicist that the Smithsonian Magazine called her the first lady of physics research and Newsweek declared her the queen of physics. Finally, she started getting that well-deserved recognition. And that is how a small girl from a faraway village in China went to school, proved herself as smart as any boy, learned to be a scientist, and even became a queen. So there you see her, the queen of physics. So Wu Chan Shuang's story. Born on May 31st, 1912 in the small town of Laoye near Shanghai, China, Wu Xing Shuang, Wu Xing Shuang grew up in a loving family with her parents and two brothers. Unlike many parents at that time, her mother and father believed that girls were equal to boys and should have an education just like boys. They were encouraged to her to, her to persevere despite the prejudice against women. This perseverance always helped her when she faced the same bias against minorities in the U.S. They believed and taught her to believe that she could succeed at anything she wanted. As an adult, she encouraged other girls to become scientists too. Wu Chan Shuang, or Madame Wu, as her students called her, accomplished amazing things. Besides performing experiments that proved beta decay and disproved the law of parity, she was also the first woman to be hired as an instructor by Princeton University, the first woman to receive an honorary doctorate from Princeton University, the first woman to be elected president of the American Physical Society in 1975, the first scientist to have an asteroid named after her while she was still alive, the first person to receive the Wolf Prize in physics in 1978. Not only was she the first woman to do these things, she was the first Chinese woman to achieve these honors. It is no wonder Newsweek magazine called her the Queen of Physics. Wu died on February 16, 1997 in New York City. I hope you really enjoyed today's story. I hope it found you happy, healthy, and safe. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.